We're, we're going to jam out. Is that what we're going to do? <laughs> All right, how you like that, Jerry? The Red Arrow Frank, young man, Ne Per Se tribe. Ne, it's sometimes Nez Perce, Ne Per Se, uh, Prairie Chicken Dance Outfit right here. Northern Plain style Prairie Chicken uh, powwow dance outfit. It was uh, beaded and sewn by his wife, Bree Black Horse. Prairie Chicken Dance Style is a courtship dance. His father-in-law, Blackfeet leisure artist and painter, Terrence Gardapi, taught him how to dance. Derek dances at powwows in his outfit throughout the Pacific Northwest. Enrolled member of the Nez Perce tribe and works as an associate attorney at the law firm of Stokes Lawrence, where he represents tribal businesses and non-profit organizations. Holy man! Lucille, he's only 19 years old. How do you, how do you become a lawyer at 19? Man, this guy's young. Get out of here. I love this, man. Man, I wish I'd grow up be like him. Ah. All right, we have fully beaded moccasins here. There uh, has floral beadwork on this uh, uppers right there. He has the red shags with the bells, and then he's got some knee, uh, knee uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, cuffs. All right, and then a fully beaded, uh, a correction, uh, He's got the yoke, uh, uh, aprons, go to the front and the back, turn around to the back. And he's got his bustle right here. This is a, um, a traditional style chicken dance bustle right here. And uh, it has the uh, stripped uh, e uh, hawk feathers on the inside and the eagle feathers on the trailer. Now, I'll give you an explanation. Uh, the reason why they're stripped, okay, and they, they shred the feathers is somewhere near the Battle of Little Bighorn, when they went back over there, you know, they left they're the enemy on the ground and what happened was when the when the the their, the conquerors went back they saw that the birds had stripped apart the feather and that's the reason why they have this shredded it symbolizes those battles from a long long time ago the other half is sometimes in the inside of the bustle can you turn and look at me on the inside of the bustle sometimes they have a cup that's that holds the feathers some use it some don't but what that represents is the tornado. It's so it's, they, they recognize their, their plains people and so on and so forth. So the bustle is very important for the chicken dance uh, full regalia. And in this case here, go ahead and hold up the hoop. He's got a, a otter hide hoop right here. And he has his dance stick that's right here. And in this style right here for this uh, breastplate right there, this one here is uh, relative to the tribes where he comes from. They have this kind of drop type of, uh, of uh, breastplate with a, a very uh, beautiful uh, medallions here in the front. And of course the beaded headband with the uh, rosette and then turned to the side. And again, this is decorated with deer hide, deer hide and uh, different uh, tints on there, yellow, black, and red. And turn to the back real quick. He has a silver stamped uh, roach spreader that has the sockets in there and holding these uh, pheasant tails in there, okay? And then the, the very top of this, the eagle plumes, which are very sacred. They, we try to take care of those as much as we can. and you know, keep them forever and ever. And so this is a men's chicken dance and this is Derek Red Arrow Frank. Let's go. There you go. He's doing it. Come on now, I need some more. Come on, give me some love. Give me some love for this young man. Yeah. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. All right, here we go. We got another one. Oh boy. I think I know this guy. I won't make you dance really high because he's a high. His knees go all the way up to his, his uh, shoulders. I've seen him dance a lot of times. Come on out here, number contestant number five, number five, Adrian Stevens. Oh my goodness! Come up here to the pink right down there, right down in the center. Step, step one more. There you go. I want everybody to see you. Outstanding. Okay. Tribal affiliations: Ute, Shoshone, Bannock, San Carlos Apache. All right. And what he's wearing is the Nuchu war bonnet war shirt and uh adrian stevens earned his war bonnet in uh, mandarin north dakota in 2019 and a lot of this is uh as a recognition for different types of elements that he's done in his personal life helping others being part of organizations helping the youth and adrian himself you know he, i've seen him at a lot of different places he participates in a lot of powwow events 
And uh, he does have that background. He does hold that type of posture in the Native American community. So we're really glad that he's here today. And his uh, partner, Sean Snyder, and himself created this war shirt to match the family designs that are across the headdress of the, of the war bonnet. So notice that uh, more than likely when the, the war bonnet was, uh, you know, kind of given to him and, and you know, blessed to have it, it had these designs. And so what he's saying is they built the beadwork. Go ahead and show them your shoulder work right there. Notice that we have the same similar designs as the front piece on right there. And then go ahead and turn the face to the monitor. The war shirt itself does have, is fully beaded, a uh, correction, full uh, tanned deer skin without being cut. It's the natural right here. And then el put your elbows, put your hands on your hips right there. And then turn and look at me. Turn and look at me right there. Stop right there. And then he's got uh, the beaded uh, cuffs right here, fully beaded moccasins. And the front apron with the uh, brass uh, placards right here in the front with the brass studs and the fringe. And uh, also he's wearing, go ahead and face the crowd. He's got, um, underneath the, 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 these are elk teeth right here. Right inside, that's an elk tooth necklace. He's got a, like a, a, a beaded tie. It's shaped like a tie. And uh, those came about somewhere, probably about the 1920s or 30s when they started to emulate, because it has a beaded collar. It almost looks like you're wearing it for a shirt, okay? And so, uh, again, a full eagle headdress right here with the eagle wings, they use the eagle wings for this one here to decorate that, and then the ermine skin. This signifies leadership, these type of, uh, these type of uh, the small uh, ermine skins right there. So again, the Nuchu war bonnet and war shirt. This is Adrian Stevens, number five. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> Outstanding. Okay, thank you. All right, we're going to our next adult. Okay, here we go. Contestant number six. Number six, we have Tom Ferris. Come on up here. Outstanding. All right. This young man here, he's from Norman, Oklahoma, uh, representing tribal affiliation Cherokee in Oto, Missouri. And, uh, oh, sunglasses. Where's my sunglasses? I'm going to look cool, too. All right. At a minimum, the title of the work is called Off Kilter. All right. So it's, uh, Indian size. Ah, oh, okay. That's what I wear, Indian size, me too. And at a minimum, he says, I was included in a show exploring Southeastern Native artists, artists with Scottish or Irish heritage. In my research into my Scotch background, I found my family tartan and created a ribbon skirt using that tartan, which is an homage to Oto Missouri heritage and also made a bandolier style sporan, a nod to my Cherokee heritage. All right, at a minimum, all right, yeah, round up, don't go nowhere. Okay, he's got uh, Oklahoma style plains moccasins, and of course, the uh, a, a, a pattern after an Irish theme with the ribbon that's on there, and then the, here's the, the, the belt drop, but he has a beaded cuff right here. Oh, oh, wow, Richard, He's, what he's saying is he's recognizing Richard Aitzen. He, we, you know, we lost him last year. He's a Kiowa artist, bead worker, and he wanted to show his his item that he uh, more than likely purchased from him maybe a couple of years ago. Yeah, and he's just a, a heck of a person. He was here at Swaya for many years. And uh, Adam, let's turn around real quick. And so it's a regular vest, and so it's, it's somewhat contemporary to a certain extent. But at a minimum, we can see the pleats and the folds on the back of that Irish kilt right there. And then, uh, you know, he has the gorget right here in the front. The Cherokees, this, a lot of them use this type of uh, 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 jewelry. It could be made out of silver or brass, a gorget right here. Sometimes they attach different levels to them. And so, uh, again, he's got the earrings at some point, and his hair is very closely shaved. A lot of the tribes back then in ancient times, they shaved their head real close, all right? And uh, he borrowed my sunglasses, so he is cool, okay? So, this is Tom Ferris, number six. Let's give him a round of applause. Woo, man, looking good. Hollywood, yeah, buddy, looking good being in Hollywood. Yeah, uh-huh, all right. We're moving forward there, folks. All right, next contestant is number 24. Number 24, come on out here, Mr. Zeke Argianis. Okay, all right. Number 24 is wearing traditional Diné tribal attire. 
And this is uh, this title of work is called Turn of the Century. And what he's wearing here is, is, is I asked him earlier, what is, the, what is the most important thing you want me to say? He wants to recognize this woven chief's blanket that is roughly uh, done in the 1900s. Okay, and the other half, he's um, third phase chief's blanket. Let's turn around so we can look at the blanket. Hold, hold your arms up so they can see that. Yeah, grab the edges. Notice that this has to be at least maybe nine feet across. And the, the phase itself is what he's talking about when they categorize them is that these types had certain bands that went with them. And, and I can see that the wool is not one complete color of wool. More than likely, again, this was a, a, a long time in making to create this, this total blanket right here. Go ahead and turn around right there. All right, and then put your hands to the side so we see the front. There you go. And now he's wearing some of this jewelry right here. This is a, a second phase silver concha belt right here. This silver belt right here, and that's very detailed. When you come up here and take a look at that, that is really something to look at. And uh, he's also wearing 1880s to 1930 silver jewelry right here. And I assume that this bottom one here is, is that old as well. Zeke is uh, demonstrating a really fantastic set. Can we look at some of the jewelry on your, your, your wrist? He's got like three bracelets on that side and another one on the left. Okay, and then the traditional uh, Navajo shoes with the leggings and also the, the, the belt. So these, these, uh, these bandoliers themselves, a lot of the medicine men use those and they have it for different parts of their ceremonies like the Yebiche dances and stuff like that. So that's where that comes in. It's very uh, useful for them. And again, it carries particular items that are, are gonna be used. And likewise, I did wanna highlight, look to the sky, look to the left. Sorry. He's got uh, earrings. Now on these ones here, they're tied by string. A long time ago, again, uh, that, again it's, uh, the earrings were given to Navajo children for a particular portion in their, their growth stage. And a long time ago, they actually pierced them with a knife. They used the knife to open the ear and then they would go ahead and put a string in there and tie the turquoise on there and, and you know, hopefully it didn't close up. But that's how they did that a long, long time ago, okay? And so, I don't think he did that. He didn't get sliced with a knife, but a, a, he said a cactus thorn. Oh man, I don't know if I could handle that. I'd be, if I was like five or seven, I'd be crying by then. Man, he's a tough guy, Zeke, right there. But again, hand-sewn clothing and leather attire, uh, leather attire, rather. And again, this is contestant number 24, Zeke Arteon. All right, round of applause. Strike a pose. Give me a pose, man. Come on. Throw one arm out there. Do something. There you go. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, here we go. Contestant number 28. Number 28, come on up here. Leo. Okay, Leo Harrington. Yes. Harrington, right there. Harrington. All right, Leo Harrington, number 28, Pyramid Lake Paiute. Oh, okay. So this is somewhat of a, a contemporary type of version of uh, clothing. And uh, you're the artist. Okay, what's your name? Christy Ruby. All right. Step right here so they can see part right there. Yeah. Right there. She's the artist. She helped uh, create that vest right there. But uh, Leo is Pyramid Lake Paiute. And um, now, our artist, she says, I hunted the seal on September 11th, 2021, to commemorate the tragic day 20 years ago. And that the seal meat was shared with friends and family. So when she created this vest, I mean, it has a meaning. And as with many of our artists, a lot of them, they have that. But I'm gonna go ahead and continue to talk about uh, our, our contestant here, number 28. Go ahead and turn to the uh, front. Let's take a look at this bracelet. This is a bracelet that's very intricate. It has small uh, turquoise stones inside there with a very huge coral ring. All right, and then let's look at the other side right at the hand. He's got a regular a men's bracelet with another uh, a green turquoise ring. Pretty, pretty awesome. And um, a necklace. He's got the a different type of beaded uh, necklace with the teardrops inside there right there. And turn around one more time. And the relief on the, uh, the seal hide is also showing through on the leather. So in other words, the leather was placed on top of that and then the seal hide underneath that. And it's the raven that's shown right there on the front. 
okay? And so it has different colors inside there. And uh, about how many hours it took to build that? About a whole week to put that together. Yeah, and then turn to the front, and then the loose leather vest right here. And it just has some buttons in the front. And uh, it looks great. It looks totally awesome. Give a round of applause. Wow. And the artist. Outstanding. Thank you. Christy Ruby.